you get people who maybe haven't studied science deeply or don't know what science is or how and why it works, they will invoke their own sort of sensory judgment as to whether they, judge, they assess something to be true. But science, when it reached maturity, I would say beginning 1600 and onward with the near simultaneous invention of the microscope and the telescope, enabling investigations into two completely different directions in the universe, we are taking in knowledge and insight and information that had no relationship to our five senses as we evolved in the plains of Africa. All right, you said it before. I know our senses, they can't be trusted. Don't worry about those. Smart men are here to tell us the truth about the world we live in. I say, I say, I, I say, I learn you something, boy. You want to almost feel a responsibility to make people smarter about science. Well, that's an interesting uh, way to think about it. I think it's, 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 it's not a responsibility, sure, but I, I think of it as a duty. If I have the capacity to do so and it could serve the greater good, then I would be irresponsible if I did not. And that's how I think about it. And that's what motivates me. Oh, that's what motivates Neil? Aren't we lucky? Learning from the master, I feel special and privileged indeed. Uh, first of all, I'm, I'm not a professional skeptic. I'm a professional scientist. What? Not a professional skeptic? That's what a scientist is. Unless you push agendas and hold on to dogmas, in which case, well, you're not a scientist at all. So why should I trust you, Neil, instead of my God-given senses? Please enlighten me. The, the, the universe is under no obligation to make sense to us. It's the observations that matter, even if they conflict what feels right to you. We have learned to trust the observations because that is the measure of reality. It's the observations that matter? Really, Neil? This chart tells us what the universe consists of. 4% normal matter. Well, that's good at least. 74% dark energy and 21% dark matter. So 95% of the universe, and yes, I see that the chart adds up to 99%. I didn't make it. Someone far smarter did, no doubt. So 95% of the universe has never been observed. Yet, you just said it's all about observations. It's about measurements and observations. When they align, you don't have the luxury to cherry pick the extremes of these measurements and then declare that that's what is true. No, 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 no. You don't get to cherry pick and decide what is true. That's all that you do. It's not about measurements. It's not about observations. You have destroyed science. You have perverted what many of us were taught was unpervertible. Religion is corrupt. Education, corrupt. Politics, corrupt. Business, corrupt. And now, science. You have cherry picked what you want to be true. I mean, where is Richard Feynman? If it disagrees with experiment, it's wrong. In that simple statement is the key to science. It doesn't make a difference how beautiful your guess is. It doesn't make a difference how smart you are who made the guess or what his name is. If it disagrees with experiment, it's wrong. That's all there is to it. And we always try to guess the most likely explanation, keeping in the back of the mind the fact that if it doesn't work, then we must discuss the other possibility. See, Richard Feynman once said, you see, one thing is I can live with doubt and uncertainty and not knowing. I think it's much more interesting to live not knowing than to have answers which might be wrong. I have approximate answers and possible beliefs and different degrees of certainty about different things, but I'm not absolutely sure of anything. And there are many things I don't know anything about, such as whether it means anything to ask why we're here, and what the question might mean. See, Richard Feynman was a real scientist, honest at least. He understood how science was supposed to work. Well, those days are gone. You now have people going around saying that the Big Bang is a fact, that evolution is a fact, the age of the Earth is a fact. You can't tell me what is true. It is scientific only to say what's more likely and less likely and not to be proving all the time possible and impossible. So let's just take a look at the dark energy, dark matter subject. Scientists and astronomers saw that galaxies and stars were not acting as gravity says they must. So what should we do? Feynman said, If it disagrees with experiment, it's wrong. Even Lawrence Krauss understands what science is supposed to be. He doesn't practice it, but he can speak it. The, another major misconception about science is that science involved, is involved with the truth. 
Science cannot prove something to be absolutely true. There are no absolute truths in science. That's also how it differs from religion. Science can prove things to be absolutely false. That's how science progresses, because think an idea that disagrees with the evidence of experiment is false. And it's false today, and it'll be false tomorrow. But what we do in science is we get rid of all the falsehoods, and what remains has an element of truth. But even if something satisfies the test of every experiment today, and in fact, that's what this young lady was referring to, it doesn't mean that we won't discover we have to modify it. All right, so someone explain to me, please, please, somebody tell me how, when gravity no longer matched our observations, we invented dark matter. We invented dark energy. I mean, why can't we just throw gravity out? It's wrong. Oh, wait, but the sphere, the ball, gotcha. Gravity pulls us to the center. Oh, I get it. Why would I listen to you, Neil? We should be listening to scientists who are actually willing to admit what has happened, like Rupert Sheldrake. The science delusion is the belief that science already understands the nature of reality in principle, leaving only the details to be filled in. This is a very widespread belief in our society. It's the kind of belief system of people who say, I don't believe in God, I believe in science. It's a belief system uh, which has now been spread to the entire world. But there's a conflict in the heart of science between science as a method of inquiry based on reason, evidence, hypothesis, uh, and collective investigation, and science as a belief system or a worldview. And unfortunately, the worldview aspect of science has come to inhibit and constrict the free inquiry, which is the very lifeblood of the scientific endeavor. And so instead, we get charlatans who missed class when it was said, if it disagrees with experiment, it's wrong. Or an idea that disagrees with the evidence of experiment is false. We get Neil. whoop de friggin do We get the NSF. What do they do again, Neil? They get together and establish objective truths about what science tells us about our, our lives, our environment, about the world. Oh, so again, you get to tell us what's true. You get to cherry pick because you know all the answers. You know, I think the internet landed in our lap and we all celebrated the access to information, but I don't think we foresaw one of the consequences of it, which is with brilliant search engines, you can have whatever idea, however fringy it is, type it into the search engine and you will find every other person in the world who has exactly that same idea, giving you false affirmation of it being true. And now you say we are true and everyone else is not. Neil, that's your entire game. This is what your secret has been. It is how you brainwashed a world. You've created an echo chamber with peer review, your royal societies, the NSF, false affirmation that gave you the belief that you were speaking the truth. Just because others have the same ideas or beliefs or wants doesn't make it true. And what it has done is it f has fractured the world. I don't know that we all uh, saw that coming. So what we need is a tandem way in the educational system to, to uh, inoculate us against being distracted by false information that's out there. This, this, would, this should be a fundamental part of what it is to be educated, being able to judge what is true and what is not. Okay, and so we have to educate the youth so that they are better prepared to judge what is true and what isn't? What have you been doing in classrooms for a hundred years? Can you not see that we are smelling the fraud? Who do you suggest, Neil, who should we put in charge of teaching children how to recognize what is true and what isn't? By the way, science literacy may be the best kind of inoculation against that because it, tra it trains you, it's not so much what you know. Yes, you should know how an internal combustion engine works or what evolution is or the Big Bang, sure. But deeper than that is uh, science literacy is a capacity to know how to think about information and how to turn data into information, information into knowledge, and then knowledge perhaps into wisdom. Ah, it's so simple, why didn't I think of that? Teach them science is true so that they can better question what? What you taught them was fact? Give me a break. Okay, so David Powell has sent us a video question along these same lines. Let's take a look. 
majority of the people out on this planet believe that the Earth is still a globe. I've recently encountered someone who believes it's flat. Um, it's created by NASA as a conspiracy and a cover-up. And all the images we see of the universe are created by CGI. Uh, my question is why do, they, do these people exist? What the hell? Why do these people exist? Did you really just say that? Neil, do you see what you've created? I exist because I still have a brain. Not everyone has handed over their entire mind and soul to Neil for safekeeping. And can you please show them some light? Thank you. Yeah, Neil, can you please help us? We're not going to have nice things if flat earthers exist. Neil, please help us. Reminds me of a video by Tet's Truth Tube. Check it out. I is everything okay? No, Neil, everything is not okay. This BLB BS about the Earth being flat is getting out of control. Can you please help us? Can you please help us? Can you please help us? All right, hold my sandwich. Oh, sure. Oh. Well, you said that science should be skeptical of politics. Don't you think we ought to be a little skeptical about science, too? I mean, can we trust you guys? Carl Sagan, can we trust you guys? Well, <clears throat> here we are on a planet which is uh, about 5,000 million years old. Tens of millions of years. Uh, the sun around which it goes is not much older. It is part of a galaxy. Uh, which is uh, perhaps uh, 10 or 12,000 million years old. Billions of years ago. Which is one of perhaps hundreds of thousands of millions of other galaxies. It's around 50 million. Carl Sagan, can you please help us? At the time of the Big Bang, Four billion years there ago. was uh, energy, elementary particles, which slowly evolved into the kind of universe we know today. We are the product of a grand evolutionary sequence. Around 530 million years. That is one with 120 zeros after it. It's around 460 million years ago. Something like 225 million years. I'm going to have to do something that I rarely do. i got to hit the science panic button. Science Emergency Defense Program initiated. Science Emergency Defense Program initiated. Oh my God. 55 million years. Can we trust you guys? Mr. Kako, can you please help us? I disagree. You'd be put in prison for saying a fraction of the things that you just said. If you disobey the emperor, off with your head. Around 4 billion years ago. Okay, let me ask you a question that. now. On tape, let me ask you a question. Absolutely. Who was behind 9-11? Are you a conspiracy theorist? Not Are really. you these people that think that maybe George W. Bush toppled his own building? What do you think is behind 9-11? Let me ask you that question. Who was behind 9-11? I think... Let me ask you a question. Uh, I think... ask, answer me a simple question. Who uh, is behind 9-11? I give you the courtesy of being on your show. You should give me the courtesy of answering one simple question. Let me ask you a question. And if you don't agree with it, you get your fingernails pulled out. Can you please help us? Can you please help us? Mr. So Neil, can you please help us? Can you save the world from these parasite mind thinkers? Yeah, again, it's, there's some missing education. It's a, it's a failure of the educational system. And yeah, you can go chase after these adults who speak this way. And I, I don't know that I have the time. I don't know that you have the time to do this. No, we're not missing any education. We were not only required to go to school and learn your facts, we were required to pass the class. We've learned your science. We went looking for facts and evidence to back it up, and there was none. And what do you mean you don't have time? Didn't you just say earlier? But I, I think of it as a duty. If I have the capacity to do so, and it could serve the greater good, then I would be irresponsible if I did not. And that's how I think about it, and that's what motivates me. Well then, guess who is irresponsible? You proved gravity by dropping a mic on Comedy Central, guy. But what we do know is, though it, again, in a free country, let them think Earth is flat. I, I'm not going to chase down people. That's an inversion of a, of, a, of, a, 
of, of, a, of a knowledge pyramid that will that will t ride a ship off the edge of your flat earth. Oh, good one. The edge joke. Haven't heard that one before. Here's a clip from a great video by Deep Inside the Rabbit Hole. Enjoy. Here's our flat earth with our magnetic center. This is the shoreline that we call Antarctica that surrounds our world. And here's my boat. I put my boat down and immediately the compass points north. If I want to circumnavigate, I want to head west or east, but we're going to go west right now. So I'm heading west, and as you see, west keeps turning. So I have to keep going, and this is how, when you go west, you end up going all the way back to where you started from. Same thing for east. I go east, I keep having to turn because my compass keeps making me turn to go east. If I want to go dead reckon west, so this would be dead reckoning west, if you watch the compass, I'm no longer going west, I'm going south. Any straight line on the flat earth will eventually become south. And that is how you circumnavigate on the flat earth. Nobody can circumnavigate south because when you go south, you keep on going. So did you catch that, Neil? Do I need to send you to 13 years of indoctrination so that you get it? I mean, if you want this to end, if you want to end this discussion, if you want to show the world that the earth is a sphere, get on a plane and circumnavigate north to south. Easy, right? Do it then. Put trackers on a plane, advertise it, take a plane full, film it, live stream it, or take baby steps. Why don't you just go from Auckland to Cape Town? Just make that flight nonstop. Should be easy, right? It's only 7,200 miles. You do that Sydney to Santiago in 11 and a half hours. It's weird that I can't find any flights that go direct. Zero. Can't figure out why. Let's try uh, entering in non-stop. My days are flexible, so we'll check non-stop here. Nope, nada. There's a 24 hours. There's a 22 hour flight. But wait, you can do the same distance in 11 and a half, Sydney to Santiago. And yet, when I check for non-stop flights, I get the message, we couldn't find flights that match your filter selections, even though I put completely open days and all I asked for was a non-stop flight but I can't find one. That's kind of strange considering you do Sydney to Santiago in 11 and a half hours. So you should be able to do this distance, which is, uh, yeah, 7,100 miles, 7,200 miles, which means it's even shorter, 7,100 miles. So why do no flights exist, Neil? Why? Uh, by the way, there's a passage in the Bible where it's uh, 1 Kings 7, I think, 2 Kings 7, where it describes the shape of King Solomon's pond outside of his castle, outside of his, man um, the, uh, his residence. And it says, it is round on all sides, 30 cubits across, 30 cubits of round, 10 cubits across. Well, if you divide those two numbers, you get 3.0. That is the Bible's attempt to give you the value of pi. Okay, but I could, <laughs> the ratio of the circumference of a circle to the diameter. Well, that's the wrong answer, okay? Pi has actually some decimal values there. Wow, that's the Bible's attempt to give you the value of pi? Neil, what answer would be correct? What is rounding? Uh, when were decimals put to use? When were the numbers zero to nine put to use? Could it be an estimate? In fact, Neil, isn't it an irrational number? It never ends. Therefore, you're going to use this as some sort of evidence? I mean, come on. If I asked you how much fuel was on the Saturn V, and you said 203,000 gallons, is that right or wrong? What if it's 203,400? What if it's 203,400.23 gallons? Where exactly does it say, here is the value for pi? I'm not even someone who says that the Bible is divine, but I would never use what you just did as any kind of proof. I mean, you say it like you're proud. 
Tell you what, Neil, you tell me what the value of pi is. Go ahead and write it down. Maybe you'll realize that if a Bible scribe wrote the answer you seek, they'd still be writing today. Um, oh, just a quick thing about the flat earth. Uh, during a lunar eclipse where the sun casts earth shadow on the surface of the moon, you'd have some lunar eclipses where the shadow would just be a flat line, and that has never happened. What <laughs> that a just has never happened. <laughs> it has always been, it's always been a curved surface. And the only thing that makes a curved shadow, no matter the angle of the, of the illumination, is a sphere, just so you know. I kind of want to know why you're shaking. Certainly interesting. Um, you don't give it up, do you, Neil? If we go by your rules and assume that it's the shadow of the Earth, well, perhaps you may be right. But the only thing that makes a curved shadow is a sphere, huh? So what are these shadows on the bottom of this pool? They must be spheres, right? Oh, well, that's interesting. Looks like it's just surface tension on the water that created a circular shadow. I thought you just said that only a sphere makes circular shadows. Well, here's a great video by Carly Sunshine. Let's see if anything else might happen to make circular shadows. Check this out. I'm just gonna drag this plate through the water in the pool. That's it. But look what forms. Perfect black circles on the bottom of the pool. And it's so weird. They don't die. They just keep going right next to each other. I sped this footage up because the circles took three minutes to cross the pool and didn't seem to be dying out. These got sharper as they went and made it all the way across. Hmm. Those shadows didn't look to be caused by spheres to me. Neil, you are officially a joke. Do you ever want to, so would you ever want to go to like the moon? Do you have any interest yeah, in going Yeah, if I'm going to space, send me somewhere. You, Not just what? boldly going where hundreds have gone before in low earth orbit. Uh -huh. And and I, so so yeah, I'd go to the moon, to Mars, Like if Elon and Musk and his whole team do what they say they're going to do. Yeah, I would have him test the rocket first, <laughs> then I'll go. Very, yeah, yeah. very smart thinking. <laughs> they say, but they say they're going to do that by 2024. Is that really possible? I'm skeptical, but... My skepticism is irrelevant because what matters more to me is that somebody's even thinking that way. Right, yeah. And without folks like that among us, we might as well all just move back to the cave because it's people like that who got us out of the cave in the first place and created a tomorrow that previously was only imagined. And so, so however skeptical I am is, is not even relevant. I just thought you were about to climax right there. <laughs> <laughs> it's a space Very space. excited. Oh, it's pretty clear he's climaxed. He has definitely hit his peak. It's all downhill from here. On my way out, the following are some images meant for whoever that guy was who asked Neil why people exist who question NASA images, so enjoy the CGI. And to Neil, you are part of the group that knowingly or not has trashed the name of science. Because you hate the ideas of God that men taught you, you decided instead to worship the words that men taught you. Smart move. Wake up and get with it, or I hate to tell you that the legacy you leave behind will be a real Degrassi one. Help us fix what you broke, or get the hell out of the way, because the truth is coming through. Be kind, don't lie, and open up your mind, because there's truth inside. So we're out here at the um, Neil deGrasse Tyson performance tonight at the Bob Carr, <laughs> and we've got a couple signs with us. Bubbles in space. Hey Neil, where's the pair? And of course the Earth is flat. We're just trying to educate some people tonight. You know, welcome some friendly debates if they want to. People are taking lots of pictures. We're telling them to hashtag bubbles in space because this is one of the biggest flops of NASA is when they film ISS spacewalks in underwater pools. You can watch video after video of video of this bubbles in space. And they don't really know how to explain it. Probably called it space debris, but um, there are air bubbles in space because it's in an underwater pool. Oh, and by the way, the, the, the hey Neil, where's the pear has to do with the fact that Neil says that the Earth is pear shaped. He said in an interview that the Earth is an oblate spheroid, aka it's pear shaped. But if you take a look at any official NASA photo, which are cartoons and computer generated images, but let's just assume they're real, 
we get a perfect sphere every time, so we have this time, pay me a word from here. Hey, I'm curious more than anything else. Are you able to hold it up? What's up? Uh, oh, yeah. Or, or flat earth truth in time. Okay. What is it, just out of curiosity? So the earth is really flat, and okay. the fact that we've been told that we live on a spinning space ball is uh, one of the biggest deceptions of mankind. And because of the age of the internet, different technologies, we are now finding out how badly NASA's lying. For one, there's bubbles in space during the uh, International Space Station. How do you know that? Well, if you watch their footage, you can watch the bubbles come out of their helmets. Oh, and this nice. has happened 5, 10, 15, 20 times, maybe more. And um, they don't really have an explanation for it. And um, that's one of the biggest flubs. But I mean, from using green screens and harnesses to camera tricks, they're, they're screwing up a lot. And we're catching it now. Um, but, so yeah, once you find out that NASA's lying about just about everything they're doing in space, they're really just in low Earth orbit, kind of putting on some Hollywood productions. Yeah. Um, then we... What's what? Okay, what I mean, uh, Neil over there. Okay, so Neil deGrasse Tyson's here tonight. As well. Right. Yeah. He said that the Earth is actually in a late spiral. It's pear shaped, but slightly chubbier at the bottom. And he claims that if the Earth spin over time, it's gotten chubbier. Well, I don't know if you've ever seen a picture of the Earth, but they're all perfect sphere, perfect ball. So it's hey Neil, where's the pear? It's just kind of a joke. Uh, I, I, I got you know, it. Attention grab. I laughed this off for a long time, and eventually, you know, reasonable people that I know were telling me, hey man. This is how, how is it? Like in the atmosphere, there's only a Okay. Camera is basically what you're back. Okay, so the model, think of it as like a dinner plate. Okay. Yeah, okay, if you're at one point on the dinner plate, right. you can go over here to this side. And you're just going basically around in a circle. It's like going around your neighborhood. You can run around your neighborhood from point A to B to C to D back to your starting point. It doesn't make it a wall. You're going to go in a circle, aren't you? Not necessarily. All right. So if we, and then, you know, I actually, it's too bad that you guys don't have, yeah, he doesn't have like a, no, 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 just like, okay. So we're drawing a, a this, this I'm curious about Okay. That's why it's a piece. All right. Okay. Imagine that. Okay. So everywhere that you're facing, the north is in the center. South Pole Excuse me, sir. Can you get a picture of you? This um, center point, if you're over here, 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 you're over around the black center point. Right, but okay, but if you were basically, if you were here, and let's say you're trying to get it over there, mm -hmm. with a sphere, you basically need to to walk until you finally get there. Right. In this model, I mean, would you just fall off the planet? Exactly. So if you go in any direction south, you're going to hit the 360 degree ice wall. Now, I've never been there, but this is, goes with the theory. But there's an ice wall that encircles us, and that keeps us from the water spilling over or falling off the edge. That's just a common myth with the theory that there's So an what edge. happens? So this dinner plate is floating in space? No, no, it's not moving. Oh. Fixed the movable flat. Um, everything in the sky is moving, just as you observe. Okay. So, so the what, sun goes so what by. are they? Are they spheres? Are they. they uh, uh, well, that's. Ellipses or whatever. I think the flat circles. Possible. some sort of uh, something that they put up there, whether it's a, you know, a weather balloon or, or something like that that is taking pictures. Um, tell me this, I if satellites... I encourage you to read um, when, how actually the space race got started. Mm -hmm. I'm not the author, I'm reading the book. covered a lot of stuff in the Yugoslavia, you know, during the Cold War, or actually right. prior to the Cold War, right. the rocket technology and stuff like that. Right. And, um, I, I respect your view. Right. I respectfully disagree with your view, but I, I just I don't see how, how you can think that the, like, for instance, like, you've been up north, like, the, uh, all the way, um, which, I don't mind. It's just, you no, know, this is just great for the conversation. Oh, yeah. Really okay. big okay. This has been, like, resurfacing the last couple years. Has it? Really heavy. 
and there's a group. Okay, so, so, so I've got family right now in Alaska. All right. And when you go to Alaska, and you go to the Arctic, and you go to places like that, um, and you go at high elevations, you go at high elevations, you know, and even if you fly, but if you go at high elevations, you can see the curvature of the planet. I disagree so, with you. Educate. So okay. when you go up in an airplane, I've had lots of people tell me this. Right. Well, I've flown before. I've seen the curve. Yeah. Well, I said, okay, well, I need to check this out here for myself. Right. So I've, I've flown many times since then. I can assure you, once you go back up there, right. there is no curve. The, the horizon is always perfectly flat and I love it. It's confirmation bias. You grow up and you know in your head it's a fat. The Earth is a, it's a ball. Like You have no reason to, to question that until right now. It's not a perfect ball. It's not a perfect sphere. Right. But, yeah. but it's, it's got but I believe that it's, it's actually... Car and go to work every day. You know this is pavement. It's pavement. You never think otherwise. But if someone one day tells you, "Hey, man, that's not pavement. That's like actually rubber or something like that," you're gonna be like, "That's ridiculous." Well, but you but know, you know, you know. The, the, obviously, the prime meridian, you know, latitude, longitude, all that good stuff. As you go up in elevation, right, the actual distance between the, the lines of latitude and longitude start basically getting a little smaller. So this is start, you know. But it, mathematically, it makes sense, doesn't it? It would. I mean, I think it's, it's. I think what they did was they took the flat map and they wrapped it around on a ball and gave yes. us this. And it, it does. It does work in that sense. But if you created it and you made up the numbers and the shape and everything, then it would work. Yeah, um, I will tell you this: there's no observable, measurable curvature anywhere in the Earth, and there's no um, experiment that can detect the spin. That is. I mean, without NASA photographs and ISS stuff, how can you prove to me? Your own experiment or observation techniques that the Earth is either curved or that it spins. The only way I can prove to you, to me, because I've never been in a spaceship, right? And I've never been uh, at higher altitudes over 40,000 feet, right? So the only way I would think is basically to go on a flight like the YouTube spy plane. That darn thing goes 70,000 feet plus. 70,000 feet, that's double at any airliner, right? So, and and they, when they basically take photographs of, of, of actual footage, there's a great documentary uh, that uh, the BBC made. Um, a British guy, uh, he's kind of a funny guy. He went up there, well, May, his last name is May. Okay. And he went up there, and he gave a permission to go up there on the YouTube platform. They filmed the whole thing. Right. It's not even the United States, it's a foreign country. The BBC is really broadcasting a uh, uh, channel. Uh, basically, Fox America, they went up on a YouTube spy plane, the US Army, the US Air Force, rather, basically, the Nancy's aircraft, and they went up there, and the, the curvature was very distinct. Yeah. Yeah. That's possible, I can, I can say, but I have so, but the thing with the fish island like is, the Red Bull is, is, is that you use well, a lot if you, of them. If, if you go ahead, and the fish island, uh, uh, that's a good point, except for one thing. When you focus on the person, you see the person, but yet around you, you see the curvature. Right. So, so there's images of NASA getting caught using fisheye to show right. us the curve, where like the panel of the ISS yeah. is curved too. So those, throw that in the basket. And the other ones are just computer um, uh, techniques, uh, you know, Hollywood. Yeah, but camera but, tricks. But, but you're going like, you're going like weird. So do you think that, that we didn't go to the moon? No, so definitely not. Okay. We can't leave low Earth orbit. NASA's uh, actually flubbed and said it like three times that humans can't leave. We're what trying about, to leave. What about ICBMs and hot metal missiles? You can't, you can't, uh, um, if you, we have a, a ceiling that we can't see, is that what you're saying? Um, I don't, I can't prove this, this is speculation, sure. I will say this, but there is, with the theory is a dome, like yeah. the Truman Show. Right. So there's a ceiling, Operation High Jump and Operation Fishbowl. Uh, if you look into those, the military did uh, experiments where they tried to shoot something into the dome, basically break on through to the other side, or whatever you want to call it's it. like the Zongo. Exactly. Yeah. So th there's, there's declassified documents that talk about that. I mean, I can't prove that there's a dome, but I don't think that we're leaving. I think that's why they came up with the Van Allen radiation belts. They say, oh, we can't go back to the moon because the belts are radiation, yada, yada. Well, it's because there's a ceiling that we can't leave. The Earth is in a closed system. And all the heavenly bodies rotate perfectly in what's called the firmament. Sometimes. So what about these guys? So you're saying that all these astronauts uh, in the 60s and 70s up to the ground? Have you ever watched, have you ever watched the interview when the men got back from the moon? Neil Armstrong, the first trip to the moon, where they no, walk on the moon, you've got to watch it. They look like they're about to get a life sentence. They're sitting there, and they're being forced to lie. And I honestly believe that someone like Neil Armstrong is very, very upset about it. Because before they went, they were all... Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video presentation. If you did, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, like the video, and share it on your favorite social media sites. There's a lot more to come, so stay tuned, and we'll see you back next time.